What's up and welcome to the DualSense Podcast for episode 159. I'm one of your co-hosts. My name is Jason, and I'm joined, as always, of course, by your beloved other co-host, who's calling himself this evening on Podcastle, Jenna Side. <laughs> so bad. He's also, <laughs> God almighty, he's also known uh-huh. by his real name, his given name, his Christian name, is Travis. Travis, what's going on? Man, I'm... I'm amped up today. I had a monster at about 10 o'clock. And um, as you can tell by our, our green room conversation, I'm, I'm really excited to uh-huh. be alive today. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, been, yeah. it's been a hell of a week, but we're here on a Saturday. Yeah. We, must we be made something it. Of, yeah. On a Saturday. Yeah. You're ex- that, that tells you that's a little, a little hint right there to the audience that we were recording on a Saturday as to what kind of week it has been. I don't know what it is about this week. It sounds like you've had a week. I've had a week. It's been something well, we had a big convention of police at my facility this week. That was Whoop busy. <laughs> the governor uh, was in my building for a spell this week, mm-hmm. um, speaking to said police. Mm-hmm. And that was a little bit nerve wracking. You know, you're on high alert whenever governor is in the building. And um, <laughs> <laughs> and then every night after work, there was something going on. There was birthdays and eating with family and sisters going back to college. So everybody wants to get together, you know, all this, Why? all this shit yeah. going on. Yeah. And so just my days have just been packed with stuff and I'm just, I'm tired. And then the reason why we were recording on Saturday this time is because last night on Friday, I emceed two and a half hours of beauty pageants, as you know, and, uh, uh two and a half hours for two and a half men. <laughs> no, they were all female. As far who as I know, I mean, they could be whatever they want. Do I, do I know I mean, who won? I mean, maybe, but there was a, there was many, many uh, young ladies. Okay, uh, nice. One, and I did ba- I did the baby contest too. Let me t- speaking of, so I did the baby contest first, and then the beauty pageants afterwards. Mm-hmm. But yeah, favorite you, babies or, have, or the humans? <laughs> do you have an over under as to how many moms parents put? That their baby's favorite food was mommy's milk. Oh God, uh, an over under or just a number? Yeah, just well, give me just a number. You have a guess? Uh, Thirteen. Just how many? No, three. Three, oh, three. Three mothers put that their baby's favorite food was mommy's milk, which is perfectly reasonable. Don't were they all? Wrong, but... Were they all millennials? Oh, I don't know. I didn't pay oh, attention God. to that. I okay, was in the zone. Sorry. Yeah, I was in the zone. But but do you know as 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 a man? <laughs> How awkward it is to be up on stage <laughs> and to say that a kid's favorite food is mommy's milk. The first time it came up on the first paper, first child that it came oh, the up. The very first was, one. <laughs> yeah, I was reading it and I was like, I get to, you know, I'm like, whatever the kid's name is, parents of, and I'm, it's like favorite food. And I'm like, I see it, mommy's milk. And then I'm like, oh my God, do I say mommy's milk? Because I'm thinking of that scene in, scene in Jim, uh, Liar Liar where Jim Ooh, Carrey's like, milkers. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's because you have huge jugs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I was I was out of my element for sure. But, you yeah. know, the reviews are in and uh, I got a I got a 79 on Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> for there my performance. Go. Good job. You're right behind the Barbie movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you real quick about this great thing that happened at work. Oh, OK. So we were talking about how. The owner of our business, if you want to do research, you can figure this out. The owner of our business had a uh, party mm-hmm. for the 4th of July where everybody wore all white, okay? Mm-hmm. So we're talking about it, me and a couple of the guys um, who happened to be black. And okay. there's a reason I'm telling you that. So we're talking hey, about the party. So. We're going on and on about it. Like, it's just wild. All these famous people are there. And we're trying to, like, it's just crazy, like how does he have that much pull? Does he pay them for an appearance fee? Like, cause you know, like, what do you mean? You know what I mean? Cause like yeah. the Saudis played paid Beyonce, like 25 million to perform at a birthday. So it like, it makes you wonder, like mm. it just makes you wonder, right? Like some, yeah, you know, we're oh, just yeah. going through all the, like, it's just, we're all kind of like gobsmacked by the whole situation. Cause it just seems like you're watching a movie and a man who is our, um, one of our workers walks up behind us and he's like, how can he get away with that in 2023? And we like, look at him. And he's like, like what? He's like, he had an all white party. How can you get away with that? <laughs> and then we were, <laughs> one of the guys I work with was like, bro, we're talking about what they wore, not not what color they are. Yeah, it's like when they, it's like when they have a black tuxedo party or whatever, yeah. just the opposite. Uh, but he, the way he said it, he said it like, if I fucking did that, they would shut uh-huh. that shit down. <laughs> That's not what they did. <laughs> 
Yeah, buddy. Don't don't try. That's one of those don't try this at home moments. Definitely uh, don't don't you try it. You know, if you're a billionaire or whatever the fuck millionaire, you you definitely can. Anyway, Travis, we are a weekly PlayStation podcast where you and I get together each and every week to discuss all things PlayStation, like news, rumors, new game releases, and much more in the world of PlayStation. We do it all in under 90 minutes, of course, and we post new episodes every Monday on all of the usual podcast services around the world and perhaps many worlds. It's really hard to say at this point. No UFO talk this week. Proud of us. And we also share our episodes on YouTube if you prefer to listen there. And uh, doing pretty well on YouTube. We're thankful for those of you who have been subscribing and listening over there. So glad to have you. You can also find us on social media on X. Our handle is at the DualSense Pod. But we're also on Instagram, Facebook, and Threads as well, if you please. Our website is the DualSensePodcast.wordpress.com. So please find us, hit us up, chat some PlayStation with us. We'd love to hear from you. And without any further ado or nonsense, let's jump into the week of news. Not a very busy week of news, quite honestly, but uh, some interesting financial stuff and PlayStation Plus stuff to talk about. So here we go, starting with number one. Sony released its quarterly financial results this week for the quarter, which ended on June 30th, and it should come as no surprise that the PlayStation division is quite healthy. Sony said that third-party game sales and hardware sales were the drivers behind the increased sales in the quarter. In fact, software sales were up 27% year-over-year to $2.83 billion for the quarter, with 56.5 million game units being sold across PlayStation consoles. PlayStation Studios titles accounted for $6.6 million of that 56.5 million sold. On the hardware front, sales were up 42% year-over-year to $1.3 billion, with PS5 selling 3.3 million units in the quarter, bringing its lifetime total to the previously announced 40 million units sold. It's actually, I think, 41.7 to be precise. And believe it or not, Sony believes that PlayStation 5 sales were slow last quarter, but that they expect it to ramp up. They also revised their forecast for the PlayStation division which it now projects to make $29.1 billion in the fiscal year, a 14% increase over last fiscal year, with profit expected to rise 8% year over year, although the profit forecast remains unchanged from the previous quarter's report. Sony explained the stagnant profit numbers by saying, quote, Operating income is expected to remain unchanged from the April forecast, mainly due to the impact of the above-mentioned increase in sales of non-first-party titles and an expected decrease in cost, substantially offset primarily by a deterioration in profitability of PlayStation 5 hardware, mainly due to changes in promotions by geographic region and the sales channel mix, as well as the impact of changes in the launch dates of a portion of first-party titles, end quote, intimating that some first-party games were delayed. So what do you make of any of PlayStation's financials? I don't understand their reasoning for the projected forecast profit to change to not change like that doesn't make sense to me at all you, if you're going to make the only way it stays the same is if you increase if you increase your income by 14 percent mm. then you would need to increase your expenditures by 14 percent, and then it would balance out sure. so i don't understand what they're saying and also all that's kind of stupid to me anyway because you know the new playstation is supposed to be coming out uh, or whatever you're gonna call it the revert revised ps5 that's not mm. a slim it's supposed to be coming out. So you're telling me that that's not going to drive profits. And you're, you're right there. They're talking about, what do they call it? Deteriorated profitability of PS5 hardware. Mm-hmm. Well, you're releasing a new PS5 hardware. Right, right. Which within the last quarter, what are you talking right. about? I think they're hoping that that'll be more profitable because probably cheaper to make that new one, I would assume, but sell it for the same price, maybe. I would assume. I mean, see, that's the thing. Like you would think, yeah. right? But also all the parts are different and it's yeah, maybe it ends up being a, a push at the end i don't know we'll find out though but i just thought mm-hmm. that the the uh, explanation was kind of mid for what they're trying to sell there mm-hmm. but i always think people are embezzling money so whatever <laughs> um uh-huh. but no i mean all of the increases right uh, of the hardware makes sense because they're actually in the wild now mm-hmm. 40 i still think 40 million units is f- just fucking crazy it's right like it's hard to imagine it's, it's almost mm-hmm. double xbox series x and s it, the wild part to me, though, is like, you're like, wow, 40 million, that's a whole lot. And then you're like, how many people live in London? Hmm. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's yeah. it's almost not that much, but it is that much. It's it's very it's a very odd thing to think about. Um, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, but it makes you wonder, like, 
oh god it just it just makes you wonder how i don't know how to explain it like it just seems like the market yeah i guess that's what i'm trying to say like is there a bubble to the market of this like 40 million units like how many times are 40 million people going to buy the new, a new system right yeah i mean it seems to be every time right i mean uh, to your point like it seems like there is no point there's no signs of this slowing down at this being hardware consoles you know after you know, there were times there where people were talking about, oh, consoles, are, this is the last PlayStation. You know, this is the mm-hmm. last generation of gaming consoles. Like, is it really? Like, <laughs> you know, are we are we really ready to walk away? Are these companies really ready to walk away from, it's specifically sticking with PlayStation, are they really ready to walk away from 100 million hardware units sold, well, you, you know, every, every yeah. time? And it's, it's I guess it's too because, like, you know, if you think about how much movies changed, it was like, you know, mm. VHS, DVD, Blu-ray. Streaming. Streaming, right? Like, there's a very linear graph there, and it changed mm. each time. It's where you had to buy the product. It's like, you know, they're still supporting PS4, and they're still moving 40 million units. So it's like, mm. I just think it's really interesting. I, I don't, I just, it seems to me like forecasting for a company like Sony or, or Microsoft would be just absolutely impossible. Like right. all you can go by is previous year's data, but so much changes in that world. And it's mm-hmm. so finicky because like we talked about before, you don't know what game's going to hit. You don't know what random live service is going to pop off. Like how sure. could you project if, if Fortnite was exclusive to Microsoft when it released, how would anybody have been able to project that success? So it just right. seems like, it just seems like you're always chasing your tail in, in the market. But aside from all of that, nothing too surprising about the PlayStation and, and the Sony news there. I mean, it's hard to imagine it drops off. Um, it's, it just seems like mm-hmm. they have such a stranglehold, even on the perception, you know, like we've talked before, like, or at least I've mentioned it before, like Sony and PlayStation feels like an Apple product. It just feels like it has this yeah, high quality reputation, whether that's true or not. And it's hard to imagine that they ever lose that. Um, they would have to royally fuck up. No, I think you're absolutely right, especially that Apple you know, Apple Android comparison in terms of, you know, PlayStation and and Xbox. I definitely think that's apt. I think that's the way, you know, our brains are wired for better or worse as consumers. You know, it's always, it's always, it's it's Coke and Pepsi. You know, it's, it's Apple Mm -hmm. and Android. It's PlayStation and Xbox. It's all these dichotomies across industries. And I don't know, you know, it's just how how we're wired, I guess. But um, hardware being up 42% sales wise year over year is incredible selling almost 50% more PlayStations uh, goes to your point that the fact that they're available and becoming more available now. Uh, they've obviously just done the price cut recently too to clear some stock for that new PS5. So I'm sure that number will go up substantially uh, during this next quarter that they report. The other thing that really stands out to me is that, that language there, that very last sentence about the impact of changes in launch dates of a portion of first party titles. There's been a lot of online conversation about that this week in terms of what first party games could have been delayed out of this year into next year, presumably. Um, That seems to be the thought process there is that something or some things were delayed out of this year. I think the obvious answer and perhaps the only answer is The Last of Us Factions. I think that game was certainly delayed out of this year. I think that was always planned for this year. And I mean, when we started this year anyway, I think that that was planned to be a game that came out this year. And then we obviously know that Bungie intervened and all that, all that stuff that happened since then. But I think that was definitely a big heavy hitting game that was supposed to be out this year uh, that didn't make it. And uh, that probably, you know, did change some of their forecasts in a way, because they probably were expecting to make a lot of money on that, given the success of the show and just the the last of us franchise success in general. So uh, we'll see. Number two, Sony revealed the most downloaded games on the PlayStation Store for the month of July this week, and there are a couple of surprises, believe it or not. On PlayStation 5, the most downloaded game was Grand Theft Auto 5, followed by Remnant 2, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Final Fantasy 16, NBA 2K23, Diablo 4, Rainbow Six Siege, Mortal Kombat 11, Hogwarts Legacy, MLB The Show 23, FIFA 23, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, PGA Tour 2K23, Cyberpunk 2077, Street Fighter 6, Elden Ring, WWE 2K23, Gotham Knights, Spider-Man Remastered, and Need for Speed Unbound at 20. 
Over on PS4, the most downloaded game was Red Dead Redemption 2, followed by Minecraft, GTA 5, NBA 2K23, UFC 4, The Crew 2, Mortal Kombat 10, Gang Beast, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Mortal Kombat 11, Hogwarts Legacy, The Last of Us Part 2, Batman Arkham Knight, FIFA 23, A Way Out, The Hunter Call of the Wild, Rainbow Six Siege, Friday the 13th The Game, Rust, and Diablo 4. On PSVR 2, the most downloaded game for the month of July was Synapse, or was it July or June? I'm sorry. July, yeah. So the most downloaded PSVR 2 game was Synapse, followed by Beat Saber, Pavlov, Moss Book 2, Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge, Job Simulator, Swordsman VR, Walkabout Mini Golf, Creed Rise to Glory Championship Edition, and Hubris. And over on Free to Play, the top three most downloaded games were Fortnite, followed by Naraka Blade Point, which is a new contender on the on the scene here, and Warzone at number three. Okay, so anything about the download charts stand out to you? Uh, yeah, I have no idea what Rim in it 2 is. Yeah, there you go. That's the first surprise. That's that like third person co op shooter dark souls type game well that seems to fit into the born franchise we're, we're really getting into so <laughs> that's interesting yeah other than that nothing really um shocking on any of the lists for me um that, that was just a weird one i think need for speed unbound is interesting at the end there on ps5 mm-hmm. ps4 is always just a mess but it's always stuff that doesn't surprise me because i know i know a decent amount of it's free to play and mm-hmm. it's probably kids because they you know you know, I think more and more people our age are pl- still play video games, and I could see myself giving my kid the PS4. So that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Nothing there is just really, really surprising. I really nothing there. Uh, the PS4 is what I'd always expect, but I did have a thought. But while you were going through all of these, um, mm-hmm. I don't know why I thought of this, but would you play a VR game that, like, each level was a different famous um, celebrity death, and you got to play it and like you know see the room like. Like you could put your the gun in your mouth like Kurt Cobain and um, <laughs> like you could shoot yourself up with heroin like Philip uh, Seymour Hoffman. Like, but you uh-huh. get to see like an actual layout of the room and like be there with them, you know? I mean, somebody would pay for that, but not me. Okay. Not me. I mean, me no, neither. Definitely, like you would. Definitely yeah. wouldn't do that. Yeah, you wouldn't pay for that? Okay. No, I mean, I would just, but it'd be fun to just, like, what if I put the needle in my chest? Yeah, what if I paint the ceiling? Yeah, like, that could be All cool. That. All right, anyway. Sure. Just, just a thought. Uh, that's a that's a, that would be a nice downloadable content, nice DLC for Mario uh, Paint. Yeah, just give it time. Give it time. Uh the three the three things that stand out to me. Number one, Rockstar leading the way on both PS5 and PS4 with GTA five and Red Dead Redemption 2 respectively. Uh the latter being a game they don't give two fucks about, which we'll talk about momentarily. Uh, Remnant 2 is the other surprise there, being the second most downloaded game on PS5, just the nature of it being a inherent, an inherently difficult game. The fact that it did that well in its first month, uh, actually with only like two weeks, if that, maybe a week on the market, so it's pretty impressive. I just, I think that's interesting, because like you said, it's a very difficult game that it's that high, because it's like, mm-hmm. the only difficult games we really see that high are born type games. Yeah, yeah. I just find that really weird because, like, most people I know that like those games don't like anything difficult. Right. I, like, yeah, I don't, I don't like difficult shit, for sure. Yeah, that's exactly. Like, everything else is hard enough, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But but let's let's play this really hard video game. It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And the the, uh, the last thing that surprised me was Synapse on PSVR 2 because that indicates to me that people are well first of all that game was a new release and it was supposed to be very good like we've talked about on the show but it was also it a neural it, release a neural release neural release yeah did i say that no I mean, it, i'm just asking because it synapses oh, are in your oh, brain oh i see oh yeah thank you god damn it you okay i, I can't even there. i'm on level 10 over here man <laughs> i can't with this motherfucker uh but if it's a new release and that means the fact that it's number one means that people are buying new games on psvr2 so that's a uh, that's a good sign for the health of. The, I think, <laughs> you of the know system. what's funny is like you said that and I thought no shit, but like it's actually a really good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, know, like, you would think that's a no brainer. Like yeah, people, of course, people are buying new games on PS4 VR two. But if that game came out and was like number nine, then that means that nobody is buying games on the headset, which would be a bad thing for the future of the the viability of the headset. Is is my point? So. Yeah, that's a good thing. And we're going to get a couple of more. August is actually a really good month for PSVR 2. Lots of shit 
uh, firewall ultra crossfire uh, phasmophobia which is like a, a huge ghost hunting game that's been on pc wow for a while so jacob wants me to play that with him so i can shit myself oh that sounds cool though mm-hmm. yeah if we stream phasmophobia you're gonna watch us be scared oh, yeah, i'll watch it yeah and i'll comment very helpful okay. things good <laughs> <laughs> all right number three Sony also announced, Travis, the new additions coming to the PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium tiers this week. Extra subscribers can enjoy the following games beginning August 15th. Moving Out 2, which is a day one release onto the service. It's a co-op party game. Looks pretty fun. Sea of Stars will also be a day one release, but won't be available until August 29th. Also coming to the service are Destiny 2, the Witch Queen expansion, Lost Judgment, Destroy All Humans 2, Reprobed, Two Point Hospital Jumbo Edition, Source of Madness, Cursed to Golf, Dreams, PJ Masks, Heroes of the Night, Hotel Transylvania, Scary Tale Adventures, Lawn Mowing Simulator Landmark Edition, Spell Force 3 Reforced, Midnight Fight Express, which is like a John Wick style uh, fighting game. And premium subscribers also get Medieval Resurrection, Ape Escape on the Loose, and Pursuit Force Extreme Justice. There are also several games leaving the service on August 15th as well. They include 8-Bit Armies, Borderlands 3, Carmageddon Max Damage, DCL The Game, which is a drone, I think it's Drone Championship Racing League, uh, Grip, Needhog, The Crew 2, Yakuza 0, Yakuza Kiwami, and Yakuza Kiwami 2 are all leaving the service on the 15th. So what do you think about uh, the new additions? Uh, I think Premium just absolutely sucks ass. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what Pursuit Force Extreme Justice is about. I wonder what you do on that. Yeah. Probably very violent. Uh-huh. I would assume. Um uh-huh. as far as what we're getting on the on the you know on the level that I buy, I would say um I know people online are excited about Sea of Stars. People are like stoked about yeah. it, so good for them. I'm not playing mm-hmm. it. Uh is moving out to where you move furniture with gang beast physics? That's correct. That's yeah, it. Yeah, okay. So that's interesting to me. Yeah. Of course, Two Point Hospital. I love the Two Point games, so I'll probably claim both of those. I'm mildly interested in Cursed Golf just because uh, it mm-hmm. just it just seems like I'll look at it. I don't probably it's supposed to be pretty it, good, but yeah, I'm I'm good. willing to look at it. So, you know, I think three out of that list is pretty good for me. But Midnight Midnight Fight Express is probably the one that I'm the most intrigued by. Yeah, I, I think it's well. I think Cursed Golf is probably more of a wild card for me than that one is, but. I would I would still consider it in the wild card category as far as games that I would play. I think it could be really cool. Yeah, it's a really interesting month, generally speaking. And for me personally, first of all, we're getting two day one releases, which is cool. Uh, we're getting a big Destiny 2 expansion, The Witch Queen. And uh, there's lots of good stuff here. Two Point Hospital is very good. Curse to Golf looks cool, like you said. Spell Force 3 Reforced. I played the trial version of it on PS5. It, People have been saying it's the PS4 version only of that, which would surprise me because there is a PS5 version for that game as well. But um, I'm, I might uh, be interested in Spellforce 3. It was cool. It's like a real-time strategy uh, thing, RPG. Kind of cool. And then Midnight Fight Express. I've almost bought this game about four or five times, <laughs> but it's kind of like that, like I was, I was saying, that John Wick fantasy where you can you know fight guys and it seems like maybe not as difficult as Sifu. So that kind of intrigues me. Uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty good month overall. You know, there's some other stuff in there that's not for me. Lost Judgment is a big one, but that's just not for me. But uh, I think it's a really good month. I think they're doing an especially good job with the extra tier while the premium feels lacking in a way. But, you know, I, I'm also not really into the to the retro games. So, you know, anyway, it is what it is. Good month. Number four, we also have... A lot of news nuggets here as well. Smaller news this week, kind of dominated. So, you know, subjectively speaking, smaller news to me. But our first nugget here is Take Two Interactive announced that lifetime GTA 5 sales have eclipsed 185 million copies sold, up 5 million copies from the previous quarter, which is incredible. The publisher also reiterated that it is expecting to have an absolutely massive fiscal year between April of 2024 and March of 2025 citing, quote, new record levels of operating performance, end quote, which undoubtedly is due to Grand Theft Auto 6 being released sometime in that fiscal year. Elsewhere in Rockstar Land, Red Dead Redemption 2 sold 2 million units in the quarter, bringing its lifetime sales to 55 million copies sold, which uh, means nothing to them because they don't give a shit 
about Red Dead Redemption 2, even though it sold 55 million copies. But I, again, I don't know who, who keeps buying GTA 5. 5 million more people <laughs> bought GTA 5 last quarter. I don't understand. I'll never will. I don't either, but it, I just I keep having... Okay, so we've got to be getting close to some sort of like vertical slice teaser of, of GTA 6, right? Like we got to be getting close to something if it's going to come out in possibly a year. Right. Like it could literally be out in 12 months. So we got to be getting close to something. Um, sure. I just, I just have this sneaking suspicion, this okay. nagging suspicion. Not that GTA 6 won't sell well. I think it will sell brilliantly. I just, I have a feeling it's not going to be as good. They I'm lost not sure why. People. Maybe that's what it is. It just seems lost like. Lost their riders and, you know, the housers and all that. Yeah, like that's, I don't know. It just seems like it's going to miss something. Like it's going to be, like you know how Assassin's Creed has been soulless for like a decade? Mm-hmm. Like maybe that, I don't know. But there's just something in the back of my head that keeps telling me it's going to be weird. Um, now maybe we see the vertical trailer and I forget all that. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> just I think likely. I think there's but, definitely reason to be skeptical, but also reason to be excited as well, as, as odd as that sounds. But I get exactly yeah. what you're saying. Part of what, makes me excited is a little bit of this next nugget here, knowing that it, it is, it is a thing. It is a thing. So speaking of GTA five rockstar games announced that they have acquired CFX.re, which is the group behind some of GTA five and Red Dead Redemption two's most popular modding tools that are primarily used for role playing uh, purposes. So, mm-hmm. you know, when we, when we see, we see people like our boy officer Faviano do the police shit you know, as a, yeah. as a role player YouTuber. So they have went out and hired some of these people to do that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, I think that is interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Because what if they, uh, can you imagine a GTA 6 that leans more heavily into the role playing aspects of, of the Grand Theft Auto universe as it is? Yeah. You're trying to make it have a baby with Sims. There you go. Yep. A, vi- a violent Sims. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could kill babies in Sims. Oh God, <laughs> I've heard. No, oh. yeah, but you know, we still it makes sense though. Uh, that, that legitimately sure. makes sense because Red Dead Two. You know, we had the bandit role and all the other roles that um, mm-hmm. the wild, the photographer, whatever it was, whatever they called uh, it, the naturalist good. or something. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. So it makes sense you'd go out and get some people that actually know what they were doing because as fun as those or as cool as the idea was, those were pretty hollow in a sense. Like, especially when you see what like what Faviano does, it's so in depth and I, and I know part of it's just them narrating what's going on, but like sure. the fact that you could search the car, like they're like you were doing police simulator stuff with those pods and it, to, to get to acquire some people from there to try to build on it. I think it's really, really awesome. Like I agree. Like I'm, I, that makes me more happy than anything else about anything. Like it almost makes up for the fact that I hate what they did with red dead redemption, just porting it. <laughs> it almost makes up for that. Yeah, uh, it drives me it, it that <laughs> drives me crazy specifically, but I'm excited and hopeful to see, you know, what they can do if they get serious about some of this more granular stuff that people are obviously engaging with, you know, GTA 5 specifically, but also Red Dead Redemption 2 in a way with the built-in features that you mentioned. So, uh, it could be cool. We'll see. Next nugget, Bandai Namco announced that Azu Azu Kenna, Azu Cena. Azu, Kenna, and Raven, whatever. And Raven will be included in the Tekken 8 roster. Azu Cena is a brand new character, while Raven is returning from Tekken 6. Publisher THQ Nordic held a showcase this week and announced some new games, as well as updates for previously announced games coming to PlayStation. A prologue for survival horror game Alone in the Dark is available now for download on the PlayStation Store, as was announced during the show. Also, co-op multiplayer game South Park Snow Day was announced for PS5, and it's coming Ooh. in 2024. And it, we literally, it's so like I have no idea what this game is. They showed a trailer, it, and nobody can really say what type of game it is. It <laughs> looked, it, but it sounds interesting. Anyway, yeah, we'll but you like, I like co-op, and you like the South Park games, so yeah, could be fun. Also, a new trailer with gameplay for open world RPG Outcast: A New Beginning was shown. It was c- kind of neat. Had a jetpack flying around everywhere. A new trailer for creation focused stunt racer Recreation was shown off. Hack and slash RPG Titan Quest 2, so think like Diablo, a Diablo clone, was announced for PS5, but no release date was given. And uh, that sounds interesting. And then we saw a new trailer for Trine 5, a Clockwork Conspiracy, which is uh, coming soon, later this year. 
A new DLC trailer for Way of the Hunter called Tickamoon Plains was shown off. It seemed like some type of like African safari type DLC. A cinematic trailer for the Gothic remake was, which is coming to PS5, was shown, but no release date was given, and that was like the most underwhelming thing of the whole show because, the, first of all, the color palette, like the color grading, seemed very off. Like it was very gray. Would you call? Oh yeah, I was gonna I say I bet it's dark. Well, yeah, that too, but it, it was very gray. It, it looked odd, and also it didn't show us anything about the game really. And then the last thing that was PlayStation specific that we saw was that. A Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin game was announced for PS5 based off the popular comic, and a cinematic trailer was shown off for it, and uh, sounds cool. Yeah, that could be really cool. Yeah, and that was all from uh, the THQ Nordic Showcase. Next Nugget, website Video Games Chronicle reported that Sony has begun beta testing cloud streaming PS5 games for random PlayStation Plus premium users. The early results are extremely promising, offering what some say is a lag-free experience, even at 4K resolution. Later in the week, Insider Gaming reported that this project is known internally as Project Kronos and is scheduled to launch by the end of March 2024. Kronos appears to to clearly be a part of PlayStation's plans and feature set for all the upcoming project, or for the upcoming Project Q, excuse me, perhaps a piece of tech that could be worthwhile after all. So PlayStation and Sony clearly going hard in the paint as relates to mm. uh, cloud streaming and uh, seems seems to have some some hope, some promise. Yeah, that would definitely boost Q up. Yeah. I, I still wonder, like, is there like a, uh, is if, you know, is there like a volume? I know it's in beta and it's doing really well, but if we, you know, if we have 100 times the users, does the volume make the service mm. lag? Like, mm, it's interesting. Or, or is it yeah. just like Netflix, you know, like like Netflix at, nine o'clock on a Saturday, it's going to be slower just because right. everybody's on. I wonder if it, I wonder how they kind of, or if they yeah. have figured out a way to, to avoid that. Yeah, that's a good point because in, in Tom Henderson's article, he did make it clear that they're operating this off of data centers around the world, around uh, the U S. So mm-hmm. to your point, you would think that if you're further from a data center or, you know, a million people are watching the same show at, the same time on the server that you're on would, would affect it in some way you would think. So yeah, I get what you're saying. Also Square Enix's share price in Japan has dropped nearly 15% following the company's latest earnings release. It is the lowest share price for the company since May of 2022 and Bloomberg reported that it is due in part due to, to the poor sales of Final Fantasy 16. Publicly, Square Enix attributed Final Fantasy 16's poor performance to quote unquote slow PS5 adoption. And I'm sorry, what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> they, they've they sold 41 million PS5s. It doesn't, I mean, it's literally only two months behind PS4 in terms of pace. What the fuck are they talking about? Do they get news at the same time in Japan or does it have to go around the world? <laughs> like, I don't understand. <laughs> around the world and under the water. Jesus, for fuck's sake, guys. Way to, way to not, to, you know, take the blame there. Anyway. Next Nugget, reviews are in, Travis, for the Gran Turismo film, and they're mixed, as you might have expected. It currently sits at a 55% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 41 on Metacritic, and uh, that doesn't matter. I'm still stoked to go see it, so fuck them. I'm not surprised by the ratings at all, but they also think that, you know, God of 60 Seconds is like a 20. Yeah, that's It's a great movie. Fa- yeah, it's false. Absolutely. Also, Activision officially confirmed this week that this year's Call of Duty game is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and it will release on November the 10th. A full reveal is scheduled for this week on August 17th. It will feature Makarov from past Modern Warfare games as the main antagonist. They also confirmed this week that that most of Modern Warfare 2's content in terms of weapons and cosmetics will carry over to Modern Warfare 3, and uh, there's also word today that the beta will come first to PlayStation as a part of the, the marketing deal that Sony has for Call of Duty. I, uh, I'm not terribly excited about this, but yeah, I mean, I'll, of course I'll it try. carries over. It's going to carry yeah. over because it's a reskin. <laughs> yeah, it's a reskin of the same game. It's I'll just try the DLC. Beta. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll try the beta, you know, but no promises. Also, the rumored Red Dead Redemption remaster that you alluded to earlier, Travis, turns out to be Red Dead, a Red Dead dud as Rockstar announced that the 2010 Classic would be coming to PS4 on August 17th of this week. Although it is a little more than a port of the original game bundled with the Undead Nightmare DLC and no multiplayer functionality for a whopping $50. So they're just uh, porting the game over, improve some shadows, nothing much. That'll be $50. 
It's a fucking joke. Absolute yeah. fucking joke. Not interested. Yeah, that that thing won't. I mean, I don't know. It's it is the internet, but based on the conversation on the internet, I don't think that thing will sell well at all. And then you mark my words: down the road, Rockstar will use it. Well, due to poor reception of the Red Dead Redemption Remaster, we've decided not to move forward with any upgrades for Red Dead Redemption Two at this time. Uh, fuck right off! You're like <laughs> this, you guys sandbag this shit. Fuck you guys. Yeah, for real. I'm not mad. I swear, I'm not mad. Also, Swedish conglomerate. Embracer Group began its restructuring program this week with the closing of developer Campfire Cabal, which is a cool name, or which had not been open even for a year, Travis. It's no doubt the first of many similar moves after Embracer has been on a rampant purchasing spree for years now, which we've been questioning constantly. Yeah. We really should have called our gang that in Red Dead 2. That's a great name. That is a great name. We should write 100%. that down. Yeah, I can change it. We can, we can go from, you know, whatever we are, the Bandito bandits chicken bandits to we are the chicken bandits, yeah. i love that we're the chicken bandits it's pretty, it's pretty awesome <laughs> it's so stupid oh it is i love also, it uh, also uh, developer dragami games announced that the lollipop chainsaw remake has been delayed to 2024 and has also been renamed to lollipop chainsaw repop a fan-made port of playstation classic wipeout is now available to be played on web browsers if you're interested for free Bungie announced this week that veteran voice actor Keith David will succeed the late Lance Reddick as the voice of Commander Zavala in Destiny. Peacock revealed that Twisted Metal is its, mo- is it quote- is its quote-unquote most binged comedy premiere to date, with people watching three episodes on average in a sitting. Nielsen Ratings also said that the show recorded 400 million viewing minutes the weekend after it premiered, making it one of the most watched streaming shows that week. So, I guess people are digging Twisted Metal in a way. I, 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 okay. I wonder if the other characters are so like, maybe the other characters are so, I don't know, flamboyant or yeah, charismatic that it's actually worth watching. But, and maybe that's why they hired the most basic bitch actor to be the lead. Right, right. <laughs> people, people that have, I've been seeing today, the last couple of days, people said that Mackie had, they, they could tell that Mackie just had a lot of fun, like with the role, like just, you know, whatever. He was just there. Like having fun with it, so I don't. I don't know. I'm gonna well, give it a shot because shouldn't we do that for everything? What are you talking about? Shouldn't every actor do that? I know. I know. Oh my God, Jesus Christ! I have Peacock Premium now for you know English Premier League shit, so I'm gonna check it out now that I have that. So I'll report yeah. back at some point. It, it can't be worse than watching 90 minutes of a tie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. Or or 90 minutes of any Everton game. <laughs> also, a new PS5 firmware update dropped this week and improved system performance of course website games industry reported that darkwood developer acid wizard studio is going on an indefinite hiatus citing a quote-unquote destructive work environment as the reason (laughs) the studio will complete its latest update for the 2017 survival horror game before taking a break which they said can last for five or ten years Jesus oh, Christ. What the fuck are they got? Like, yeah, exactly. Like, what the fuck? Just close they, the studio down. Uh, what are you God, talking they, about? Yeah, they say that like we like we don't live for 70 years. I'll just yeah. five or 10 years. We'll be back in a minute. Yeah, I mean, that's... Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The life expectancy is like 79 years for a man, and we're just going to take 10 of that and just check out for a while. I want to know what the destructive work environment is. Like, were they all railing coke and like throwing midgets <laughs> at dartboards? I... <laughs> That right. doesn't sound destructive. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> the other thing is that they've already done this before. After they released the game in 17, they took a year off and didn't do shit and it just reappeared on the map in 2018. So I was really hoping you were going to say they took 10 years off. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I released the game in 17, took 10 years off. Now they're back. They just can't tell time. It'd only been about six days. They just really, they don't understand yeah. how it works. Right, right. Anyway, Telltale Travis has acquired Erica developer Flavorworks for an undisclosed amount. Website Pushquare reported that PlayStation Stars appears to be on the way to PS5 as new privacy settings for PS Stars has been added to the PS5. The settings allow you to set who can see your Stars level and who can view your collectible display case. So it's kind of cool. Photos of the alleged PS5 Slim model leaked online this week and show a slightly smaller form factor for the long rumored detachable disk drive model. And when I say slightly, I mean slightly. But the, here's the thing. People are mad this week online about this not being very slim. 
it's like Tom Henderson has reported from day one that it's not a slim. It's literally just a new PS5 model with a detachable disk drive. He never said it was a slim. So why, people why are people chill so the fuck out. obsessed with it being slim? I, I don't, don't understand. I, don't I thought know. we were. I thought we were trying not to be fat phobic anymore, and then we're just <laughs> bitching about the fat PS5. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, if you take the disk drive out, it should be smaller. Sure. So I, I don't know. What do they? Do you remember? I guess what are they expecting? Like, remember how the PS3 went from like, like it did like yeah. a Kirsty Alley type change, like where it got <laughs> like it did it. It was like Jared Fogle yeah, went yeah. to Subway and then lost uh-huh. all the weight. Like, um, yeah, yeah. Like, did they expect that? I mean, I guess so. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's hilarious. Next nugget: Naughty Dog president Neil Druckmann confirmed through his Instagram bio this week that he is the writer and director of an un- unannounced game, likely The Last of Us Part Three. So uh, that's exciting stuff, depending on who you are. You know what I really enjoy is like these, these these industry types. We see it all the time. They love to tell, they love to change their bio or their Instagram, yeah, or their um, you know, their LinkedIn, yeah. And just they love to tell you things like that instead of just ever just just saying it. They just like I'm gonna change this bio and see who notices in six months. It's like why is that the industry standard to be sure? Super, like that's so extra. <laughs> like you're doing too much, man. Sure. No, I get it. Also, NetherRealm Studios announced that Mortal Kombat 1 will have a new single-player mode called Invasions, where players will, quote, travel the Mortal Kombat realms fighting each season's invasions in an all-new single-player experience, end quote. Larian Studios says that the PS5 version of RPG Baldur's Gate 3 will mirror the PC version going forward after launch. Baldur's Gate 3 is currently the highest-rated game of the year and in the top 10 highest-rated games of all time. They 97 on Metacritic, which is incredible. And uh, I'm definitely checking this out when it comes to PS5. It, uh, it's getting too much praise, too much buzz for me to not check it out. It's got me in there. It's got me sucked in. I, I, I did enjoy the, uh, the picture you sent us of the update they had. Which one? Was it the one where the penis was not clipping through oh. the pants anymore? That was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, penis is C and D no longer clip through underwear or whatever. Yeah, and I had a similar problem when I'd wear basketball shorts in high school, and then I finally got <laughs> updated my firmware. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh huh. But I did watched. Oh, um, well, go ahead. No. I was going to say, did, <laughs> did you see the video of the game, of this game where. That like you're walking around or whatever and a squirrel bites you or something and then you can interact <laughs> with a squirrel and you can no. select an option of like let it go or you can kick it and then the yeah. guy the guy selected kick it and it punted it across the like <laughs> all the way across the world like across the map yeah that's so, that's why people love this game um oh yeah i watched some streamers uh play and they're like sitting at their characters and um because you can get like an like a sidekick that does certain things oh, okay. um Makes different, sense. like you know what I mean, like a different type of sidekick that does whatever. And then, of course, you pick your character in your in your trope, whatever it is, like mage or necromancer. I guess I don't know. Yeah, I'm yeah. guessing at buzzwords, sure. but uh, the whole time they're talking about they they were gonna they were arguing over which one of them was gonna get to have sex with a dragon in their playthrough. Because apparently that's the thing you can do. <laughs> I did I didn't know about the dragon, but I knew so, you I could mean, have sex with a bear. Or maybe that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, I was dying. Like the, it's just outrageous, but yeah, <laughs> it is. The, listen, kicking squirrels. There's something to it, you know. Yeah, this is a, this game sounds like magic to me. So, uh, no pun intended. I'll check it out. Also, Travis, next nugget: Zombie Shooter World War Z Aftermath received a new free update this week that added a new Horde Mode XL map, new weapons and cosmetics, and it's available now on the PlayStation Plus game catalog, if I remember correctly. Quake 2 Remastered, released onto the PlayStation Store this week for both PS4 and PS5. It features numerous upgrades and even cross-play multiplayer for a mere $9.99. Acclaimed indie game Papers, Please has crossed 5 million copies sold since its release 10 years ago, according to solo developer Lucas Pope, who also created Return of the Oprah Den. And uh, is that a game you played? I feel like you like that game. Yeah, Oprah Den's fun. It's really cool. Uh, yeah, artwork's I'll- awesome. You gotta it's a it's a puzzler basically. You gotta figure out a puzzle. It's pretty fun. Like and you're on a ship, like a like a Moby Dick ship. That's cool. I uh, yeah. I own Papers Please for Vita and just haven't played it yet. So what is it what is that? Is that like a border patrol yep. simulator? Yep. That's it. But you're oh, in like dope. you're in you're in like uh you're in like Russia, I think, or like Kazakhstan or some shit like that. It's like a Soviet country. Yeah. Oh, and you're so you're, you're like, like a you're Soviet you're like a Soviet officer and you're looking for, you're looking for people who have broken the law. 
<laughs> yeah, they're yeah. Soviets. It would be Democrats. Uh, yeah. I was hoping you were looking for drugs and like, you know, immigrants yeah. hidden in the gas tanker, but that sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Apparently, it's uh, pretty good. Obviously, it sold 5 million copies, so. Good for that guy. Yeah, he's a millionaire. Good for him, you would think. He's at least a thousandaire, that's for sure. Yeah, at least. <laughs> oh, boy, where are we here? Also, Tennis on Court will launch for PSVR 2 on October 20th. It will feature five training modes, mm-hmm. singles and doubles online play, six stadiums with both grass and clay courts, and an online championship mode. And uh, it looks pretty dope. I, uh, I'm hoping to check it out. Mm-hmm. The only problem is I'm very concerned about my ceiling fan. Oh, yeah. I saw your <laughs> you tweet know. about that. Yeah, um, I'm really worried about it. <laughs> I don't that know. That game, I think I think it would be cool if you could do VR and like uh, there was some way you could make like, yeah, like a mat that would simulate the grass and the clay. I'm asking for a lot, but I think that would be really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, that game has five modes we know John won't play. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. So, I've hit, I've swung a fucking racket, guys. I can hit <laughs> I a ball. Hold, I know how to hold a tennis racket. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> also, wrestling RPG WrestleQuest has been delayed slightly to August 22nd, 22nd to 22nd <laughs> to fix a progression bug. You got really Australian there. <laughs> <laughs> it's in there. It's deep in there. Uh, also, modders have managed to get PS4 exclusive Bloodborne running at 60 frames per second and 1080p on PS5 in retail mode. So uh, it can be done. Explain to me how they can do that, but the developers can't. I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, that's it. That's the point. I, actually, I have a theory. Actually, now that I say it out loud, it's because the modders have nothing to do and the engineers <laughs> work for them. So they're like, I'm off at eight o'clock. I'm done. Sure. And then they're, they're just drinking Mountain Dew and shitting in pans in the basement. <laughs> They got nothing else to do. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, also, Bandai Namco announced that Grand Blue Fantasy Versus Rising will launch for PS4 and PS5 on November 30th for $49.99. However, there will also be a free version that includes four fighters, the first chapter of the story mode, and full online play. So it's, uh, it can be a free-to-play game if you want it to, if you're okay with a limited functionality in a way. Also, Soulsborne-style game Lies of P has gone gold ahead of its launch on the PS4 and PS5 on September the 20th, or sorry, September 19th. Website Gaming Nexus reported that publisher Devolver Digital announced several games have been delayed to 2024, including The Plucky Squire, Skate Story, Angerfoot, Stick It to the Stick Man, and Pepper Grinder. And, uh, they, uh, they had a showcase called Devolver Delayed. It was a three-minute video <laughs> announcing all these delays. It's brilliant. Dude, that's good. I enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And it said, get a, it said, get the latest on all these brave games uh, moving out of 2023. 20, <laughs> brave games. Yeah. Anyway, Moss developer Polyarch is set to reveal their next game on August 29th called Glass Breakers, Champions of Moss. It's a competitive MOBA coming to VR, although no PSVR 2 version has been confirmed at the moment. But uh, it sounds like it could be a banger, and uh, surely we'll come to PSVR 2, so I'm going to keep my eye on that one. Yeah, VR, VR MOBA is very interesting. That would be, be really cool, actually. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen like pictures of Moss, like what it looks like, but... You yeah, yeah, it's like green. What? It looks like grass. <laughs> okay, asshole. <laughs> you control a little mouse character. Uh, almost like a diorama type of thing with the controller. So like if you, I can imagine that being turned into a MOBA, and that sounds really dope to me. We'll see. Also, website PlayStation Lifestyle reported that Electronic Arts will shut down the servers for Crisis 3 and Dead Space 2 by this December, mm-hmm. if for some reason you've been playing those. Yeah, I thought those servers were a big Dead Space anyway. <laughs> a new Alan Wake 2 reveal will take place at Gamescom opening night live on August 22nd. Website PlayStation Universe reported that the following games received update patches this week. Neverwinter, Wolong Fallen Dynasty, Remnant 2, MLB The Show 23, Fortnite, F1 23, Gran Turismo, World War Z, Dead by Daylight, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, EA Sports PGA Tour, Overwatch 2, and Stray. So if you've been waiting for some new content or update or uh, patches or fixes, check that out. Also, developer Team Kill Media announced that PS5 horror shooter Quantum Error has gone gold and will release later this month. The PS4, in addition to PS5, received a new firmware update this week that also improved system performance. The Uncharted movie producer Charles Roven says that a sequel is definitely happening. So uh, that's exciting. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a sequel, so he's going to have a love interest. So we need to figure out who that's going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scarlett Johansson. Sounds good. Maybe. It was in a die is too obvious, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it can't be her again. Margot Robbie, maybe? Because she's in some action movies, right? And she's hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why she would do that, though. She's married, by the way. Fucking loser. Really? Oh, I hate him. I hate him. I know. And she loves it. She says, it's so fun being a wife. Okay, cool. I bet it is. But it's fun being your husband. <laughs> it's even better being her husband. That's for sure. Also, <laughs> Metroid Dread developer Mercury Steam is making two new unannounced games and has partnered with 505 Games for publishing rights, which means that they could come to PlayStation. Website Gamatsu reported that pixel art fighting game Pocket Bravery will launch August 31st for PC only with a PS4 and PS5 version coming at a later date. Acclaimed indie game Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition is coming natively to PS5 on August 17th. Twin stick shooter Savant Ascent Remix will come to PS4 and PS5 by the end of the year. Multiplayer machinery construction game and former Google Stadia exclusive Hello Engineer will come to PS4 and PS5 on August 17th. It looks kind of neat. Ghost Runner 2 closed beta signups are now open on PS5 with quote unquote major news scheduled for August 21st from developer One More Level. So uh, sounds like a release date to me. Side-scrolling cooperative platformer Enchanted Portals, which is like Cuphead, basically, will launch for PS5 on September the 6th, followed by PS4 later this year. Arcade platformer Spica Adventure is coming to PS4 and PS5 next spring. And finally, Gamatsu reported that child-rearing simulation game Princess Maker 2 Regeneration was announced for both PS4 and PS5, Travis. That sounds incredible. Then That implies you can only make Girls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you play the whole game as a girl dad. That's correct. Oh, you're the dad. Yeah, you're the dad. Yeah, what if you're I want to be a girl. Why do I have to be a dad? What if I want to be a girl, a mom girl, girl mom? They should make another one. Yeah. I hope it starts with like you're swinging a golf club that explodes, it's pink, and like you get to do the whole thing. Cause like, maybe, you know, I want to do the nine months of RPG of waiting for the baby too. And then you're worried about your wife during labor. I want to do I want the whole thing. Yeah, it could be. Could be. You should buy it and play it and report back. Why don't you review it? Oh, God. Oh, I'll never review. I'll never play video games again after that. I've had to play oh, yeah. that. I don't know what the platinum is. <laughs> oh, who knows? Get her to age 18 and out of the house. <laughs> anyway. All right, Travis. That's all for the news this week. And I'm going to turn it over to you now for this week's new games, which I had to piece together myself, by the way. So suck it, Push Square. Oh, God. Way to go. Could there not be any fucking repeats then? <laughs> on the 8th, we had Tower of Fantasy. On the 9th, we have Fluffy Milo, Scab Moss Snowfall, mm. Legend Bowl. as a free demo. It's like um, Tecmo Bowl, basically. Zombie uh-huh. Soup. On the 10th, we have Stray Gods, the role-playing musical. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing there. We have Seven. Si- how do you say that? Sven? Sven. Mm-hmm. Z- Sven is completely screwed, which I guess that's like Nordic or something. Probably. Atlas Fallen, Duck Race, BQM, Block Quest Maker Remastered, The Dragon Nest, Command of the Flame, Quake 2 Enhanced Edition, Mm -hmm. The Expanse, Episode 2, and on the 11th we have Dead Cells Return to Castlevania. And there you go. That's all for the new games this week. Uh, The biggest release, I would say, is is probably Atlas Fallen. You also got Quake 2 in there, which is pretty big. People And also people are excited about Dead Cells expansion, the, the Return to Castlevania expansion. Uh, Legend Bowl looks cool. Like you said, it's a Tecmo Bowl type of game. Uh, and uh, Tower of Fantasy, I'll talk about that in a moment. Although I forgot to put that on my list. But anyway, that's all for the new games. Let's start to wrap the show up now, Travis, like we always do, by discussing what we've been playing and anything we're looking forward to. What do you got? I remember playing Battlefield. Oh yeah, definitely. That's all I remember. Okay, uh, I got the uh, I got the Deagle. I got the ACOG on it, which I was uh, that was like what I was grinding for this week. I just wanted to unlock that. It's actually pretty easy. So, like I told you guys in the group chat, I'm really good at buffed guns, and that's about it on yeah. the game. So, the Deagle right now is outrageous. It's just fun. I love that gun so like, much. The weight feels really good on the controller, and it's just it's just loud and like it's. And I know that it's weird, like. 
every time I get shot with another gun, like I kind of know what's going on. But with the times I've been shot with a deagle, I don't I don't know where it's coming from. It's it's like it happens so fast. So it's it's almost like having a silenced weapon. Like it's legitimately awesome. <laughs> I don't know why it's so good. Yeah, I could say that the hourglass restructure is better, but I still don't like it. I think it's only playable in like breakthrough. It still sucks in conquest to me. Yeah, but I agree. The breakthrough is nice the way it's set up. That that first the first group you have, it's such an open it's like a one lane. Like theoretically it's a three lane, typical three lane Call of Duty style map, you know? Mm-hmm. But the the middle lane is where all the action is. And then if you like if you go into the middle, you're getting shot from the front and both the sides. And then if you're trying to go from the sides, everybody it seems like everybody's always there. So regardless of if you're attacking or defending like that little area is super fucking hectic like there's a lot going on and the second one because of the you you basically have two levels because the 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 capture point is under the overpass i guess you'd say so you can capture it from above and below and you you get some really good fighting in there like that was probably my favorite part of the whole map i really enjoyed that area and then you know you could even snipe into it because there's some um, towers back in the sand there's just a lot of ways you could play. There's a lot of ways you could play the, the that middle attacking point. That first attacking point, man, you just want to go like machine gunner or vehicle and just let it ride, like, which is kind of fun to do sometimes. But yeah, it was a good time. Jacob's gotten really good at sniping, which took him like three days. Super annoying. <laughs> I don't know. That's who he is. Yeah, I know. He was, God, he, a couple of those clips he sent us, I don't even know what map he was on from, and he was where he was sniping from. I have a hundred hours in the game, and I don't know what fucking map he's on. <laughs> he's on know. a building. On, he's on a building. I'm like, I don't even know what you're looking at, dude. Like, I don't even know how you got there. Uh, no, no, it, it's annoying. That's it's perfect. That's what he does. It's fine. But no, it's awesome. We had a great time. No, no crazy vehicles. No Evan this week. That was disappointing. Agreed. Yeah, you know, I still, I suck so hard. Like, we had a helicopter a couple times. And, like, I just can't kill anything with the cannon. Like, I just can I never hit them. But, um, but um, yeah, we had a blast, though. Um, the, uh, what is it called? The, that one map with the beached uh, cargo ships. Oh, uh, Discarded? We played that map, like, five times this weekend. I've actually enjoyed yeah. it this week. I, I almost always hate it, but I've actually enjoyed it this week. So, I don't know I do why like that it. changed. I don't know why that's changed, but um, it was fun this week. I wish that, I never thought I would say this, but part of me almost wishes that we had the old hourglass map back. I, at the very least, I do want the stadium back in there because the stadium, in my opinion, was the best part of that map. Yeah, I think they could have got rid of all the high-rise part and then moved the yeah. stadium over there, and that would have been a lot of fun. I agree. Because those other two, the first two areas aren't that bad. Right, right, I agree. But uh, yeah, I played Battlefield. I didn't have as good a week this week as we did in the last week. I think it yeah. was kind of a rough week, if I remember correctly. Well, I told so. you, our very first map we played, we got into it, and I told you guys, I'm playing my best game. This is the only one I got. <laughs> and I set like a career high in kills, and then I was terrible the rest of the week. <laughs> you did. My problem was that I was trying to snipe because a lot of the challenges were related to sniping yeah, this week yeah, they were. for the Battle Pass. <clears throat> oh, I just threw it in my mouth. Did not taste nice. good. Uh, do not tasted recommend like, tasted like zaxby's zero out of ten would zero out of it 10. again speaking of zaxby's they've been pimping out their new philly chicken sandwich yeah I look, look guys that. guys come on yeah you took the same chicken tenders you use on every meal and you put some peppers <laughs> on it it's not impressive stop stop showing it off like at least when mcdonald's rolls up the mcrib it's different on some <laughs> level you yeah know, it's not real meat but it's just come on like yeah Oh, I definitely would have shipped the screen door if I got the chicken Philly thing. Yeah, you should try it though. Let me know. I don't think so. Not after that burp I just had. Mm. Uh, all, yeah, what else here? I also played Atlas Fallen. I can talk about that now. Been playing it for uh, about, well, played it for about a week. Um, I'm done with it now. I reviewed it for GamingNexus.com. I gave it a 7.5 out of 10, which is above average for us. I think that that game as as a first game for a new IP, I think is a really solid foundation. I'd really like to see what they can do with a sequel. I don't know if they'll get the opportunity to do that, but it has a really cool combat system. I think the combat's the best part of that game. Um, you know, the story is a story that you've heard before. The graphics, it looks good, but it's not like the best game you've ever seen. Uh, but the combat and the traversal around the world is really cool and something that I would like to see them kind of expand upon if they get the chance. But uh, 
you know, it's it's a it's probably a decent game to pick up on a sale at some point around Black Friday or something like that, is is my opinion. Uh, I've also been playing a game which I cannot speak about yet. Uh, that I have been reviewing. I've finished it, and uh, you'll be seeing my review for it very shortly. I'm getting ready to start another game for review as I await yet another game that I'm expecting to receive this week for review. So, uh, busy time for us reviewer folks. Uh, you know, the last half of the year is just really going to just bend us over backwards and uh, get us really good. But I also I mentioned earlier that I did try that Tower of Fantasy game with Jacob and it's ball sack. It's ass. <laughs> it's, I played it like for 30 minutes and I was like, dude, let's just play Marvel's Avengers. Oh, speaking of, I played Marvel's <laughs> Avengers for a little bit this week. But uh, yeah, Tower of Fantasy sucks. God, it's bad. It's, not, ter- you- it's not terrible. It's just whatever you know yeah i opened up the app and saw you guys were playing that and i thought what the fuck are they doing it's a mobile game i mean it really truly it truly is a mobile <laughs> game it came from mobile to playstation 5 and it, you can definitely tell that it came from mobile they tout they tout it as having like haptic feedback and shit i didn't feel no, any didn't haptic feel feedback mm-hmm. no, I, didn't I feel, feel like nothing. it's when you go on a date with a woman and then you find out she's a man <laughs> it's still a man <laughs> like, you just you can't pour them uh, into something better than it is yeah I get, sure, listen, sure. I get why women want to be men. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Don't get me we wrong. can fart whenever we want. Yeah. Yeah. So don't recommend that game uh, for sure. But, uh, you know, looking forward to several things. It's about to get real fucking busy. Uh, you know, we got, <laughs> we got like NBA coming up. We got FIFA coming up. We got the Crew Motor Fest. We got Payday. Mm-hmm. You know, City Skylines, fucking Metal Gear. Uh, Alan Wake, Assassin's Creed, Hell Divers Two in October. Like we're about to get fucked. Like we've been getting yeah. fingered. We're about to get fucked. I hope you get. I hope you get Crew Two and review that. <sighs> Why? Because I want somebody to review it and let me know if it's good. <sighs> okay, you're not gonna buy it anyway. Why do I need to tell you that? Well, it might be good. I don't know. <sighs> okay. Okay. You say so. We'll see. Anyway, that's it for us. That's it for Travis. That's it for me. It's it for the show. We're going to get out of here now. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe to get a new show delivered to you every Monday on your podcast service or the YouTube. We'd also very much appreciate if you can leave us a rating and review on your podcast service. It helps us quite a bit in the algorithms and with discoverability, as it were. Uh, we'd also uh, appreciate if you could find us on social media. We'd love to chat PlayStation with you, as we do with several of you. We love hearing from you, chatting PlayStation, talking all the things. And you can find us on Twitter. Gosh, damn it. Not called Twitter anymore. X, where we go by at the DualSense pod. We're also on Instagram, threads, and Facebook. And our website is the DualSense podcast.wordpress.com. And uh, please, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening as always. Have a great week, and we'll talk at you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>